Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. Today's topic is AP Physics 1.1 to 1.3. The objectives for today is to know the nature of physics, uh, that physics is an experimental science, to know the strategies of solving physics problems, and to know the fundamental quantities and standard units of these quantities. So physics is experimental science. That means we use scientific method to determine our conclusions. This method start by asking questions, design experiments, then make observations. Finally, from these observations, we find the methods. So this is a process. Now, all the theories can be revised by new observations. Uh, also, theories have a range of validity. For example, Galileo says all things follow the same rate. So there is a limitation for all things follow the same rate. When it is free fall, that means when air resistance can be ignored. Only when air resistance is ignored or air resistance doesn't exist, then all things follow with the same rate. So the theory has a range of validity, has conditions. Now here is a review for Pisanera. Since physics is experimental science, so we conduct experiments. So there are uh, some vocabularies we need to know. A uh, first one is experimental value. That is the value we get from our experiment. Accepted value is the value that other people, especially scientists, have published in the reference table. The difference between these two is called absolute error. Uh, percentage error, the percent error is absolute error divided by accepted value times 100%. Now there's, uh, there are a set of strategies to solve physics problems. These strategies can be uh, denoted as IC. I means identify, identify relative, uh, relevant concepts to determine the target variable in the given quantities. And what is the question talk about? Is this about force, for instance, or energy, or other concepts, right? Set up the problem. That means choose the equation um, on the known and unknowns from identify step, right? Then execute. That means do the math. Finally, evaluate. A lot of us forget the last step. Evaluate means does make does the answer make sense? Sometimes you will get an answer that does not make sense at all, but we forget to go back and check uh, where we made a mistake. That's a very important step, evaluate. Now here are uh, standards and units. So all physics quantities are measured against a standard. So there are uh, three standard quantities this standard and <clears throat> these quantities have standards and units so this standards is called international standard of fundamental quantities for instance the quantity time the standard is one second so every time a measurement is a second you compare your time duration against this one second so how many seconds right so how long is a second so here is the standard for the length to determine the length of one second. Similarly, over here is the standard to determine the length of one meter. And lastly, here is the standard. How do we? How much is the mass? How ma How much matter? This is the standard to determine the mass. So here is the SI unit for second meter and kilograms. You see this kilograms? It has a prefix. So this is g actually is the base unit in kilograms this is a quantity that has a prefix but that is the standard we're using all our calculations physical dimensions so the, uh, the dimension of physical quantity specifies what sort of quantity it is is it time is it space or is it mass the fundamental dimensions are three corresponding to three fundamental quantities, right? The length, mass, and time. 
length is L. That's a dimension. Dimension for mass is m. Dimension for time is t. All the other physical quantities can be expressed by combining these fundamental uh, dimensions. So, for example, the dimension for energy E, by combining this uh, fundamental m, l, and t, we can get a dimension for E. Similarly, we can get a dimension for momentum. Derive the units. So, like derive the dimensions. Derive the units is also uh, combining the basic units. We have a derived unit. For example, for volume, uh, this is a derived unit. The unit would be meter cubed. The dimension is also derived, which is L cubed. Now, velocity is another example for derived a unit with derived dimension. Derived dimension is L over T. Unit is meter per second. And density is mass over volumes. So here is M over L cubed is the dimension and its unit is kilograms over meter cubed. For example, if L, M, and T denote dimensions of length, mass, and time respectively, what is the dimension of impulse. So how do we determine that? We look at a definition of impulse. Definition of impulse, impulse is change of momentum. Now this change, change has no unit. So it's so impulse and the momentum have the same unit. So um, or same dimensions. So uh, momentum's dimension is mass times the velocity, which is m for mass v is length over time so the dimensions for moment uh, for impulse which is the same as momentum is mass times length over time another example if a meter kilogram and second denote units of length mass and time respectively what is derived unit for work now how do we get that we look at the definition of work Work is defined as force caused displacement, so force times distance. Force is mass times acceleration times distance. Now the unit for mass is kilograms. The unit for acceleration is meter per second squared. The unit for distance is meters. And so we combine these three to get a derived unit for work, which is kilograms times meter squared over second squared. So you should be familiar with this. This is the unit for joules. SI prefix. SI prefixes are prefixes such as the symbols K, M, C, or G, or some other ones like uh, mu, okay, P, N. So combined with SI base units. So the SI base units is meters, second, grams. To form a new unit that are larger or smaller than the base unit by multiples or submultiples of 10. For example, km, that's kilometers. K is the prefix, m is the base unit. So km means k is 10 to the 3, right? That's multiple of 10. Submultiples of 10. That's a thousand meters. So we're 10 to the 3. This is a scientific notation. So scientific notation, we use scientific notation <coughs> to express quantities that's very, very big or very, very small. So here is SI prefix expressed in scientific notation. So tera, to express something really big, we use uh, tera. Tera is 10 to the 12th, and a giga, and so forth. Down to very small is pico is 10 to the negative 12. So again, to express something very, very big to something very, very small, we use scientific notation. Something very big is the limit of observable universe. It's 10 to the 26 meters. That's very, very big. To something very, very small, the size of atomic nucleus. That's 10 to the negative 40 meters. So to express these quantities, we use scientific notation. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.